again. Uh, today I've got a repairing that I don't enjoy doing. I absolutely detest repairing modern game consoles. Anyway, today I have an Xbox Series X in with a broken HDMI connector. And right on the back of this thing, there's the HDMI socket. I am told that impatient mother has <laughs> yanked the cable out and took half the socket with it. So, I've ordered a replacement socket. Hopefully it's the right thing. Just a bit of surface mount soldering really, but the trouble with these is just getting at them. What well, I've just seen, not just the HDMI socket, also the network port. The Ethernet socket's been ripped apart. Oh well, they've not mentioned that one. Alright, let's have a guess where the couple of screws are. This looks likely here. See if we can pry this up. Oh, it's a sticker. Oh, there's one. I've heard there's one under this label. Yep, right there. Well, finally found a use for a T9 Torx drive. The weird size. The only upside to fixing these Xboxes is absolutely hammering down with rain out there. I'm glad I'm in here. You can probably hear me. Typical plastic construction. I've spotted through the grill there's little plastic clips in here, just like all the other old Xboxes. So you have to sort of get something down there to sort of pry it off. Probably get some more. See if we can get some purchase on it. Or a bit of a result there. Oh, oh. This looks to be built a lot different to the early Xboxes that I've seen before. I've seen ominous uh, ribbon cable disappears down inside and there. And these are sometimes glued to the case just to make the job more horrific when you extract it out there, you tear this ribbon cable off if you're not careful. Don't know what this screws to. My approach to these things is keep taking the screws out until it submits. Oh, there's more underneath the dust. This looks like it might remove the fan. Ah, nice, yes. The fan comes out. Ah, this thing looks like it. it's got clips on. Does it rotate? Hmm. Not very easily, it doesn't. Oh, there's a little thing here. What does that do? Found some sort of plastic clip. Not a surprise. Ah! Maybe they're not so daft at Microsoft. More screws. We'll just take them all out. A few different colour screws. I don't know if these are colour coded or what. They all seem to be the same size. Oh, the green ones are machine screws and the black ones look like self tappers. So does that thing come out? Yes. That feels pretty loose so pull that out. Ah, it's just tight, I've been a little wimp. Yank it harder. There we go. We've got a ribbon cable. I'm always nervous of destroying ribbon cables. That can ruin your day. You have a close up view of the devil's work here. It's a little ribbon cable there. That's got a little. Looks to me like it's got some sort of retainer on. Hmm. Ah, you just push it. Push this little thing. Like a pedal bin. So this thing, I think, has got a latch on here. There's a moving part. Well, if that little one's got one, this must... Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Deal with this tape. Where's that little knife? Oh, 
and there. Glued down with more devil's glue. There we go. We've got to get this rubber band off. Whatever it's for. Oh, I don't know where it went. It seems to disappear down into the bottom. Not sure if that rubber band does anything, but it's uh, it's free to lift out now. Ah, there you go. Got more dust in than our over. Probably been in someone's bedroom, some boy's bedroom. Hmm. I want to get to this socket which is on this board at the top here and I've noticed that all the screws are coming in from this way so it looks like I've got to take the top off first more screws to have a go at there's this board here that might as well come off that's on a little connector I can go in the pile of bits Cable, this is the power supply here. There's a cable goes in for this cable contraption. I think we need a bigger uh, bit. We might try if it's actually a T10. No. These are a bloody funny size, I tell you. Oh, well, my first screw casualty there, I'll come back to that one later, it's just slightly rounded the Torx drive. I hope I don't end up having to drill it out. I've just ground the end of my Torx drive screwdriver down because I think the end had gone a bit uh, nasty. I started chewing up the screw heads. Not good. So go back to this one that I've mullered. Can it be rescued with the restored bit? Yes it can. Okay, more armour plating. Light this thing's getting lighter. A more fancy pants cable. Ooh. Cable tray thing here. So we've got a power connector there. Oh, Molex. I know this plug. This is a Microfit 3. <laughs> what a nerd. The power supply is off. Still nowhere near ready. <sighs> Plenty more screws to come out. I do wonder if this will ever work again. Yeah, it will. Oh, this looks more like Bluetooth. It looks like a Bluetooth thing. Ah, Bluetooth antennas will be for the um, the controllers, won't they? The pan control things. More bits. Oh, the board's loose. Oh, we've got this monster ribbon cable here that's connecting the one board to the other. I guess you have to squeeze these two in and pull. Oh, that bit went right. So, I think this is the first half of the motherboard away. Have I won already? Oh! Let's not destroy this ribbon cable. That's an expensive piece of aluminium there. The cast and machine. Oh wow. Well we have finally got to see the offending HDMI socket. I'm not sure if I need to access it from the back. It all depends how cleanly it comes away. Problem with reworking these boards is that the ground plane was well, probably multiple power planes on this board 
this will be several layers and I can see all this um, around the edge all this uh, like a uh, via stitching for a good ground plane this will be an absolute bugger to get heat into I think I might have to take it off this uh, heat sink otherwise I'll never get it hot enough to solder now, so far I haven't spotted any diabolical spring loaded clamps for the processors onto the uh, heat sink but I'm not rolling it out at this stage now, it doesn't just lift off of course that'd be too easy it's got this dreaded X shape reminiscent of the old clamps they used to use looks like we've got to sort of tease it off anyway Come on, I'm trying to lift you off, not bend you off. Come on. It'd be better if they didn't put all this delicate surface mount components in close proximity to the part you have to lever off. Yeah, finally, gone. I won't chuck that one on the pile like the others so now it might come off I mean, there's a little indent there for a the screwdriver I can hear it sort of peeling yeah it's coming it's just Lots of sort of thermal, but uh, here we go. We're off. I think the trouble was these um, sort of gaskets that go around here and all this stuff, <laughs> it was stuck and the thermal paste in the middle. None of it helping. So I can set that down there in the pile of Xbox junk, and then that can come off. So here we have revealed the the bare board. So if I understand this is the main processor, this is probably a load of memory, be high speed memory in very close proximity to the processor, or needed for this gaming and stuff. These might be I'm no expert by the way, these might be all power supplies for the thing. Yes, they will be. This side all yeah, these are all little book and boost converters. Yeah. Luckily I'm not working on that, but I'm just going to change this socket. For surface mount rework, I'm a bit of a fan of hot air. Use a hot air gun, thing like this. So I'm expecting this to go quite slowly. Um, I could put a hot plate under this to warm the whole board up, which is probably a good idea. But as I've got a lot of projects on at the same time, I don't want to fetch it out. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually put the hot air gun in a sort of a lab clamp stand it can be held for me so what I can do I can phase this to be you know give it a bit of heat from high up for a while just to generally warm the area up and then bring it a bit closer to get it more focused another trick I can do is put soldering iron on the um, actual casing of the thing which is connected to ground which will help put more heat into it Well, I've got this air feeding in here at 280 degrees, which lead free solder melts at about 220 odd degrees. So there's not a lot higher to it, but something I can do, I can uh, ramp the temperature up a bit. Um, but another thing I want to do is add a bit of leaded solder to it, which has got a lower melting point. And that'll have an advantage, it'll sort of bring the whole sort of melting point down a bit. For the desoldering phase of this, it's not really too critical, you know, how tidy you are. Just got the iron on the side of the socket there, so I can just get some more heat into it. Putting some solder on just because it will help conduct the heat. 
We can try some solder flux on here, see if that helps. I'm not sure it will. It's going to generate a lot of smoke though. It's all molten. Apart from that one corner. There we go, we're off. <sighs> Bloody thing. You've got this big load of solder around here. That's the uh, what's left after pulling that off. It looks horrific, but it's actually going to clean up really well. Let's put some flux just on it generally. And we should be able to wipe this away with just the soldering iron. These big blobs of solder should just cling onto the iron. That's got that one. Well, after all that effort and care and time consuming stuff, found out we've actually, I can't say we, I, <laughs> I've ripped a pad off the board. It's the last pin on the HDMI, pin 19. Um, fortunately, it does go to a via to the other side of the board. So a bit of a track repair needed. Um, what I'm going to do is feed a little bit of very fine wire underneath the socket. Because of the, uh, I don't think there's any room around there. And uh, see if we can pick up on there and solder it on afterwards. We'll see how successful that is. Great joy. So I just pulled this fine wire through one of the mounting holes for the socket. My plan is if I just leave this routed through, I can worry about it later. This is the new socket on there, so I'm just going to check that it fits nicely. Which it does, so I'm thinking this wire can come through just next to the pin it needs to be soldered to. Like that. Something like that. Well, I've just inserted this socket, all ready to be soldered, and also got the little repair wire just sticking through there. You can hardly see it. Tiny thing. You can start by soldering the so these legs back. I mentioned before, this takes a lot of time and patience, waiting for the heat to build up. In the ground plane. Hopefully that's got it. Just to make sure it has soldered correctly, I'm just putting a bit of I'm just gonna put a bit of heat into uh, the ground plane and a bit of solder flux. Going to attach that last little straggly wire from that pad that got torn off. Bit of a fiddle Put in the wire. Try and find some good tweezers. This really is a fiddly job. And that's got it. What I've got to do is just reattach that wire at this end. Let it like boil away the insulation off it. Okay. So in theory, get the tweezers. Just put it in position and just touch the wire onto the track. There we go. Hopefully it works. Just going to clean up all the 
resin and mess and flux and mucky residue. The other thing I need to do on this now, considering putting it back together, is uh, I'm going to reapply this heatsink compound on the main processor. I usually like to scrape it off first. Get the worst of it up. Find a paper towel. A bit of alcohol on it. And just give it a little rub. Mirror finish on that die there, ready for fresh compound. New HDMI socket is fitted with very hardly noticeable little bodge wire running across there. Compensate for my little accident. I did say I hated these things, didn't I? This green goop on here is obviously some sort of thermal conductive paste. And what I'm just going to do, because it's already been squished, is just sort of turn it into a sort of a lump in the middle so it can make new contact again. I'm just going to use standard heatsink paste on here. Just give it a bit of a spread, like making a like butter in a sandwich. And on it goes. Where's that clamp? And the next board. Games consoles in infernal pain in the rear. So will this go on now? Will it? Gets back in there. I don't know how I'm supposed to remember where all these bits came from. So that goes in there. That bit I know. Power supply main thing came there. That connector goes to the main board. That shuts. Back on. Now we can start wanging more screws in. It's got this rubber thing. I think it's an anti-vibration thing. It looks like a rubber girdle to keep its all its guts in place. Yeah, fits in there. Oh yeah, yeah. How's it clipped together? Well, that goes over first, maybe. That'll be it. Oh, doing a bra up. That must go like that. Oh, really difficult to hold on to. Pull the ribbon cables out the way. And slide this uh, drive back in. the cables in. Was the fan a bit dirty? That'll do. It just dropped in. Plug that in. That's what that big screw was for. There it went. Put this in the new socket. Anyone know how to operate these? What's that button? Oh, a light. See if the uh, TV makes anything of it.
This has to be the slowest reacting remote. Well I don't recognise any of that junk on there so I assume it's Xbox related. Looks like the HDMI is working anyway so that's good news. Get rid of this. I don't like any games consoles near. Nothing earlier than the 80s really. Junk. Oh well. Catch you next time.